No shortage of big stories this week. Here's stand-up comedian and radio talk show host Pete Dominic with What the Week. It's been six days since the U.S. told Americans to think twice before traveling in Europe. Five days since Elena Kagan heard her first case as a Supreme Court justice. And four days since Christine O'Donnell told voters, I'm not a witch, I'm you. And one week since I became a squatter in this time slot on CNN. So buckle up, kids. We're about to tear through all of it. Welcome to What the Week. There's a fine line between news and noise. I'm Pete Dominic, and on this show, I'm not interested in celebrity gossip or manufactured conflict. I'm interested in the stories and issues that hit home. So I'm taking the camera to the streets to hear what Americans really think of the news that shaped the week. Time now to catch up on the week that was. Hit it. Formal travel advisory for all Americans traveling to Europe. The State Department says avoid places where incidents may occur. Militants torched 20 fuel trucks that were headed to Afghanistan. The U.S. sent missiles fired by a drone aircraft into Waziristan. Stephen Hayes is guilty of murder, kidnapping and rape in the break-in and the fire that led to the deaths of Jennifer Hawk Pettit and her two young daughters. It doesn't bring them back. A waste reservoir at an aluminum plant in Hungary burst today. A toxic tsunami. The sludge is so caustic it burns right through clothes. Police pitcher Roy Halladay throwing a no-hitter in his first postseason appearance. Afghan President Hamid Karzai says he has launched a peace council to negotiate with the Taliban and to find a way to end the war. Jim Jones, the national security advisor, is going to be stepping down. And the replacement uh, significance here is going to be Tom Donilon. The unemployment rate is 9.6%. Well, that's what's swimming up mainstream this week, but what was undercover? A couple things come to mind. Number one, the honeybee killer has been found. Since 2006, 20 to 40 percent of honeybee colonies have collapsed. But the U.S. Army and bee experts discovered a fungus and a virus killing off the bees. You may be thinking, so what? Well, here's why. So what? Honeybees, they don't just make honey. They pollinate our crops, making honeybees pretty critical to about a third of the food we eat. Undercover number two, a French court ruled the law banning the burqa in public places is legal. It's going to take effect this spring. But our undercover story of the week, the war in Afghanistan. You may be thinking, what? I heard about it all week about the anniversary. Well, it's still not enough. If you gave the average American a pop quiz on the war, the vast majority of us would fail miserably. Where is the country? Who lives there? What language do they speak? And what's the mission? I went lunch crashing on the ninth anniversary this week to find out. This is a globe. Can, can you find Afghanistan? Yeah, I want to get started with any salsa. I'll give you 10 seconds. Find Afghanistan. Go ahead. <laughs> can you just try to find Afghanistan on the, on the, on the globe for me? <laughs> no? <laughs> so you got 10 seconds to find Afghanistan. What are you laughing at? Find it. Uh, Afghanistan. Right there. How did you do that? I know it's this way. You want to phone a friend? Put your iPad down. <laughs> oh, I got an iPad. I'll look it up. Can you find Afghanistan? Of course I can. Okay, cool. Why do you say of course? Have you been there? <laughs> no, but uh, you I watch lots of CNN, and you guys are really, really informative. Oh, okay. Iran? Afghanistan. Yeah, I wasn't even looking in the right yeah, That's all right. No, you were in Canada. Yeah, I know. Right. I'm switching to Fox News now. <laughs> <laughs> you have 10 seconds to find Afghanistan. You're so close, you nailed it. Do you guys know how long we've, the U.S. military has been in Afghanistan? Uh, about 10 years, I believe. That's right. Do you think we should have gone to Afghanistan in the first place after September 11th with, with such a large military contingent? I wish we had focused on Afghanistan and Iraq was, uh, I don't know what that was. You guys are former military. Well, how do you define the mission in Afghanistan? Uh, world peace to me. World peace? Stupidity. Why know. do you say that? I don't think we should be over there, I think. Why, why not? We need to worry, worry about our country instead of, you know, somebody else's. Do you think you can define why we're there? I guess they're still looking for, uh, I'd say probably still looking for Osama bin Laden. Yeah, I'm not I mean, sure. I mean, somewhere, I don't know. But over $300 billion, 10 years, 1,307 lives to find one one guy. Is, is it worth it? Well, one guy killed over 3,000 people. Yeah. Can you define the mission in Afghanistan? Um, originally to uh, capture Osama bin Laden. Am, am I correct? 
hawker dove, Democrat or Republican, we could all stand another history lesson on a war that's now entering its 10th year. This is my friend Joey. Joey's nine years old and he lives in Columbus, Ohio. We've been fighting this war his whole life. Now the president promises to begin drawing down troops levels in July 2011 if conditions permit. But whether we begin withdraw by next summer or not, for most of us, like me, like Joey, we don't directly feel it. The weight of this war will still be carried by our military families and the communities that they live in. They're the ones sacrificing everything for this mission. Give me 60 seconds to remind you what this mission is about. Fact, 1,307 U.S. troops have died in Afghanistan since the war started on October 7, 2001. That was just four weeks after the Twin Towers fell. The Taliban collapsed two months after U.S. boots hit the ground, and it, it felt like victory, but as attention to the war shifted with the invasion of Iraq in 2003, the Taliban began to re rebuild. And by 2006, the situation in Afghanistan had deteriorated. The news has, since has just felt like a, a near constant stream of suicide bombings and deadly attacks. After three months of deliberation, President Obama heeded the advice of his top military advisors, and he went all in. He ramped up troop levels, sending thousands more into the war zone in an effort to stabilize the fragile Afghan government and prepare their security forces for self-reliance. But this year is already the bloodiest for NATO troops since the war began, and public support is slipping. According to the most recent CNN polling, 58% of Americans now oppose the war. That's where we are today, nine years later. You want to learn more? Stay engaged. Pay attention. Read this book, Steve Cole's Ghost Wars, unbelievable. Read Ahmed Rashid's Descent into Chaos. And support Gold Star military families at familiesunitedusa.org. And keep watching this show, because I'm not going to stop talking about this war until it's over. Well, from the war in Afghanistan to the war on drugs, is California about to call for a ceasefire in the battle over marijuana? We'll hash it out next.